as a recovering heroin addict, I gotta keep myself in check. Today, I'm like 72 days off of everything. With me being a chronic relapser and having my history in recovery, it's like a constant battle between my ego and humility. Because my ego wants all kinds of up shit. Started going to 12 step meetings at like age 13. The whole uh, gist of the 12 steps is like to get you out of yourself so you can be of service to other people. Hello? They're like, first thing I do, if I'm stressed out, I go out and try to find somebody to help. He said he's basically homeless. Like, what's going on with that, man? So he was staying with you for a while and then just kept using. All right, man, talk to you soon. Later. Someone says, you can go to Florida and get clean. What could possibly go wrong? I found a kid overdose. He's, I don't know, he's on the side of the railroad tracks. All these kids think they're coming down here as a person trying to get their life together. To some of the places they're going to, they're not a person at all. They're a policy number. Help us help these kids and not die today. So the other night, I get a phone call from my boy Emerson. You know, he's a buddy of mine. His brother's a really good friend of mine in recovery. His name's Lawrence. I've known them both like a lot of years. Emerson tells me that his brother's getting high. You know, he's not sober, smoking crack, shooting dope. So I'm on my way now to see exactly what's going on with his brother Lawrence because they're both really good kids, man, and uh, actually both been a big support to my own recovery as well. What up, man? How you doing? Good, man. Good to see you, bro. You too, man. So what's going on with your brother, bud? Oh, he needed a place to stay, so like I let him stay with me, and it wasn't more than a couple of days before he started getting high again. I mean, like, I got high with the kid for years, so I know exactly what he's doing when he's doing it, you know? And I was like, look, this is ridiculous, you know? I'm just at a point now where, you know, I, I want him to get help, um, but I don't know if he's ready. I really don't think he's done. But at this point, I want him to have the opportunity, you know? You get clean and then that moment of clarity. Well, hopefully he gets that moment of clarity this time, man, you know? The difference between when I'm helping friends and when I'm helping strangers is they get a lot more tough love, like my friend Kelly. Me and Kelly met at DAF in 2008 when I went to treatment. Kelly was like the peer leader and the president of the residential units. Kelly was awesome when she was sober. She was tanning all the time, had her hair done, had her nails done, made her money. She was a dental assistant, so she had a great job. And like, she was really doing well. And throughout this 10 years, a lot has happened. She's relapsed, she's gotten sober, but we've always stayed friends. The boobs look big. It's the bra. It's called <laughs> Victoria's Secret $60. <laughs> it's hard not to like Kelly. Kelly's honest. She always tells me what's going on. She never lies. And then this one was the Kate. I broke that one. And this is your canine. Look at Yeah, you. you're oh, hillbilly, so bro. <laughs> Two years ago, Kelly started using a needle. And since then, it's been nothing but downhill. Any day, all that stuff can catch up to you. Wait the f up, Kelly. Wait the f up. She's been beat up by drug dealers. She hit me on this side one. I guess when I draw it like that, and I bit, and it, oh. yeah. She's had every last thing stolen from her. She's lost her kids. She's lost most of her family support. And that's what 20 years of smoking crack will get you, though. She had a normal life, and now it's just pure chaos. I've been talking to Kelly about going back to rehab, and she said that if I could get her a scholarship, that she would go. So I did, and now she's in detox, which is awesome. I hope she makes it past detox and goes to the next level of care without any issues. I miss my friend. I would love her back, and I'm not going to give up on Kelly until she gets it right. The last thing I want to do is lose one more friend. So Lawrence is in his 20s. Um, he's originally from Connecticut. I've known him and his brother for a long time. 
blows glass, aspiring artist. But at the end of the day, like Lawrence is a heroin addict, you know what I mean? His brother's in long-term recovery. Apparently Lawrence isn't right now. So obviously the goal is to get him out of where he's at, sleeping in the park and get him into treatment. How you doing, man? Good, how are you? All right, good to see you. Good to see you. What's going on with you, bro? Been <laughs> rough. So what happened? Because I talked to you like a month ago. And sure was like good, trying dude. to get in sober living and was doing good and shit. I got out and then fresh out of rehab, I ended up using. Yeah. Been running it since then? Yeah. Like, what, what are you doing every day? Dude, <laughs> like, wake up here, go to the meeting here. Where you sleep at? Like, in the park, where you sleep at? On the pier over there. It's rough right now. I never thought this would be, like, the situation I'd be in. Like, when I'm using and running, I get super depressed. Like, yeah. don't leave the house type shit, you know what I mean? So do you think it's like depression and... I think it's a lot of guilt and shame. Right. Until my father passed away, I never thought that I was like the statistic of depression and anxiety, but... Yeah. If you could go to treatment and detox and all that, would you go? I would go yesterday. <laughs> So what's your plan between now and treatment? Are you gonna like just try to get it in before you go or think logically and try to taper down so your detox ain't a mother? I'd like to taper, but like, you know, how that goes like So like how many caps a day are you doing? It depends, dude. If the money's there and then there's three hundred dollars on the table, I'll do all three hundred dollars worth. Look man, like my homegirl overdosed out here the other day, right? Yeah. Somebody took all her money, left her in an alley. Thank God they called 911. Dude, it wasn't your own dope. It was Rufy's ketamine, a little bit of fentanyl, and <laughs> Nesley quick to make it brown, so it looked like that. <laughs> Killing I, people out I here. All right, brother. I love you, kid. Okay. Just make sure you call me, like, in the morning and at night to check in. You know what I mean? All right. Yeah, definitely will. I honestly respect Frankie a whole hell of a lot for extending his hand to help me. You'll get the best person in the world trying to help you out, but if you're extremely sick, you're gonna push them away. As a result of me using, I haven't really been talking too much of my family. My parents, they were extremely supportive. My father was a glassblower and an artist and I went to school for glass blowing and worked underneath my father. When I lost my father, it swallowed me literally whole. And when he passed away, like I lost everything. There's nobody to get clean for. I, I try not to do it in public places. I try not to shoot in public places. But like right now, I have no other choice. As soon as you press the plunger down, you usually feel it right away. You feel like this euphoria. The love-hate relationship always takes over and like I love it more than I do hate it. And uh, I hate it when I can't afford it. You know what I mean? And I'm struggling and I'm like sick and hurting and. Do you get worried about fentanyl? Yeah, I do. Sometimes like I prefer the fentanyl over anything else, you know? Because fentanyl has like an amazing rush to it. A lot of stuff out here is not necessarily dope. It's cut with everything under the sun, like including like Ajax from somebody's <laughs> kitchen sink. That's what scares me. Do you want a cup of coffee, Ma? Sure. Have you thought about when we're gonna do an event here? Yeah, I'm mean, gonna be cool even to have another cookout. So what if we did Sunday? Yeah. I know you got a lot on your plate, but you get really busy sometimes. Are you getting to your meetings? I went to like two less than I did last week, but I'm still getting to them. Every time that you get complacent and think you're too busy, things don't go good. Yeah. Every day I pray that this is it, you know, that it's different this time. A lot of people give me shit because I've relapsed a few times. Addiction's real, man. If we don't do what we need to do, we fall off, man. If we don't do a few simple things, to stay sober, like put our recovery first, we lose everything. My name is Gary Kimball. I am a grateful, recovered 
drug addict than alcoholic, and Frank Holmes sponsored. I have the auspicious honor of trying to keep Frankie Holmes on the beam. <laughs> I love the kid. He's a piece of work. He's a handful and uh, incredibly intelligent and creative. I've heard it said I've never met anyone who was too stupid to recover, but I've met some people who were too smart. And he's a brilliant guy. He's got a brilliant mind. Very creative. He wants it, that's for sure. So far, he's dodged a few bullets. Every time I don't hear from him for a couple of days, I figure he's dead somewhere. You worry about these guys, Just you love them, you fall in love with them, you care, like they're your kids. And so then he goes there, then they take me out of the house, and I'm cuffed, and I'm freezing, I have no shirt on, no socks on, and I'm like, can I please just get some clothes? And they're like, no. And he's like, then my landlord comes, and he sees me, he goes, hey, is everything okay? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. wonderful. <laughs> yeah, great, yeah, fine. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so that was your job. I need to still sort out all my scholarships. I have everyone out except for, like, Kelly. What, you're Kelly? Oh, did you get her uh, into that thing? Yeah. Oh. She discharges from detox on Saturday, and then, because she's been wanting help for a while. You yeah, know, I know, I but when that. I saw when, that, when you had that sponsorship, she, like, jumped right at it. Yeah. Oh, my God, she's missing teeth now? And you told me. She yeah. got punched out by a woman? Yeah. It's bad. The sad thing is that she had a great mug. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Not you know, anymore. you sort of need to have all your teeth. She's like 80 pounds. No way. Her legs are like the size of my arm. Wow. Waste of a good woman there, you know? It's a shame, man. I hope she gets help. Yeah. Me too. But it would be nice if one time Kelly could stay clean for five and yeah. Because it never lasts forever. You yeah. Know, unless you work it like you work it. And if you didn't, you wouldn't be alive. Not too many kids smart enough at 18. So you weren't too smart. <laughs> Today, I'm having a event at the FHF office. Maybe somebody will find a sponsor. Maybe somebody will need treatment today. So how long you got clean now? Like, I'll have 60 days on the 17th. Nice. Coming up on three months. That's fire. Yeah, I went back out for a while. Yeah, Did of it. course, dude. You know how it is. You know, I only got like 10, 12 days right now. Shit. But right now, like that, I feel so much better. How many days you got? It'd be 83 today. OK. Yeah, I lost parts of my body due to it, so. Damn, bro. It's a good turnout. Yeah. It's a good little mix. What have you guys been up to all day? Just relaxing, really. Walking around. Did you end up finding a place to sleep last night? No, nope, same spot. <laughs> same spot. What's up with y'all? What's your stories? I live in a halfway house. And I'm like, I'm in like the best spot that I've ever been been in. So are you like staying clean or? Yeah, I actually for once have hope that I can live and live clean. So what's your plan from here? I just got out of two weeks stabilization, but. When did you get out? Yesterday. Did you get high today? I did, Frankie. I'm not going to lie. Well, I can tell. Have you got high? Yeah. OK. So I mean, I'm not going to judge you. Either. I don't know, I guess I kind of felt like hopeless for a second. I was just like, screw it, you know what I mean? So what are you going to do? You going to go get high? Absolutely not. I don't want to get high. I can remember three months ago, before I had gone to the Florida house for treatment, I was majorly suicidal. I had no hope that I could live clean and be happy and healthy. I don't, I don't want to go back to that. I'm like. So why are you playing with it? I. I don't know. Because I'm like, I'm craving for the first time. You got a sponsor? In a really long time. I do have a sponsor. Did you call her? I have not. No. You think you'd just be around dope all day and not get high? I know that I can't. Like so? Why y'all getting high in front of her? I mean, don't, I asked her. I was like, listen, is this all right? Shit, bro, do it alone, dude. You know what I mean? Like, don't don't try to keep people around. No, dude, I, I, trust me, I did not. Why jeopardize somebody else's recovery? Why would you jeopardize your own recovery? I don't know. I'm regretting it. Do you want to sleep in Bryant Park? What's it like sleeping in Bryant Park, bro? It's shitty. Don't get caught up in this shit.
So you drove here, right? Yeah. All right, so this is what you're going to do. You're going to go get in your car, call your sponsor, and get the f away from the situation if you want to stay sober. Just saying, that's what I would do. He knows the damage that could be done, but he's still hanging around, and so are you, so. Yeah. Lawrence, he's out here doing some shady stuff, using me for my car, my money, and it seems like all he wants to do is get high. Kinda hope she goes home. Can tell she's scared, man. I know the situation to want to be around people doing f up things. That's not a good thing to play with, though. Sorry to put you in that position, Shannon. Oh, give me two seconds. All right. Yo, so what's going on? What up? Right, what's up? Why are you still here? What's wrong with you, Shannon? Why you look so pissed? How much money? 60. You guys got $60 for her? I'm having her wire $60. I'm saying that on the phone. So get the info and go. You played her out of enough shit, bro. So what's up? I'm just stupid and trying to earn this money. I didn't want to do it, and he ended up talking me into it. I don't know. I don't know why I put myself in this situation. You're trying to stay sober. Like, what kind of situation are you putting yourself in? Because you're probably not going to see that money, for real. Right, yeah, just wire her 100 bucks. All right, we'll see if it shows up, bro. Let's have a conversation real quick, man. She's getting ready to leave. OK, yeah, like, you bombarded my conversation. Like, dude, I'm trying to, like. Well, yeah, because I see that she's upset because, obviously, she just got played out of money. I wouldn't expect that cash. I mean, it might come through, but if they could get 100 bucks right now, what do you think they would spend it on? I just sold some <laughs> fake assets to some people, and then got money, and then spent Wait, it. the people that he brought to my shop? Yes. Uh, that's a <laughs> issue. Lawrence! Yo! Come back! Call your sponsor, OK? Apparently, there's people selling fake drugs in my office today. Call your sponsor, OK? Apparently, there's people selling fake drugs in my office today. I'm pissed right now, for real. The two kids that they had come in here came in and bought fake acid and left. So they got people coming in here buying fake acid up at our office. Right. That shit, bro. Like, you ain't ready right now. Are you really trying to do this shit, bro? Well, that girl needs to go. She needs to get the f away from you right now, bro. Like, if she loses 60 bucks, good. Whether you're going to pay her back or not, maybe she'll think about it next time she just go on an adventure from her sober living to hang out with people getting high. What was up with those two kids that came in my office? What did they come to get? They didn't come to get shit. Dude. Yeah, they did, bro. No, they didn't. I've already had two people that you're with tell me what happened, bro. Dude, they... You sold them fake acid. No, I didn't, dude. You sold them fake acid, bro. No, I did not. Oh, I, was, I was trying, dude, I was trying to sell them shit, but they didn't buy it. Don't put my place of business in jeopardy like that, bro. You got to quit this manipulating shit. Like, I don't give a f what you tell anybody else, bro, but be straight up with me, man. Just stay out of these situations. Yeah. I'm probably going to end up, like, going to a meeting myself tonight, because I'm a f junkie. Right now, let's see, it's what, about 18 inches from here to here? That's how far I am from becoming a full-blown doe fiend, robbing my mama, robbing your mama, and kicking doors in, not giving one f I feel pissed off, disrespected. Why you got to use a place for recovery to sell fake acid? Sometimes I feel like I'm the best and the worst person to do this job. What's going on with Lawrence? I have no clue. Is he living somewhere right now, or what's going on with that? No, he's sleeping in the park. He's out here taking girls out their halfway house, getting them high. He's got this one girl coming up from, like, 
Deerfield, like taking him to cop and this, that, oh, and the other, God. who I think thinks that like he's her new boyfriend. And he's got this other girl that just got a treatment that's following him around. He has a female problem, huh? I think he's just got a problem with like not dragging himself down alone, honestly. Even though he's doing dumb shit, I still feel like, you know, prone to help him or like that I need to, you know what I mean? Just because it's like. Your homie. It's my homie, yeah. Yeah. I get it, but you need to keep your stuff together, Frank. I don't want anything that's going on there. Don't do it. Nah. I'm worried about Frankie. I can see it in his face that he's battling with something. He's struggling with his clients and I don't want him to do something stupid or fall back and relapse. That would just be awful. I hate working with friends, and you think I love it. But what would you it's do tomorrow hard. if Lawrence didn't answer your call? I'd move on to the next person. No, you, know you I mean? wouldn't, dude. You would go look for him. I don't know. You I know gotta about get this that. kid in. He's, he deserves a chance, I feel like. Think he's going to screw you over or no? I don't even know, man. Lies about every thing. Then you get resentments, and then the shit hits the fan. Mm -hmm. I know. Exactly. That's what I always worry about, too. I'm going to pick up Kelly so I can take her to her next level of care. So she's getting discharged from detox today, and I'm going to take her to rehab which is exciting. I was kind of nervous in the beginning that she was going to leave, but she didn't. I'm nervous, too, because I really wanted to try and get her into like a medication-assisted treatment, some sort of MAP program, instead of just like going right to abstinence right away, because she's been using for so long. I'm not even gonna bring it up to her. <sighs> hey, you look so much better. Hi. Oh my god, you don't fit in your pants anymore. <laughs> sure. Why is she done? I'm done? Oh. She just don't feel good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, my God. Detox, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. They told me I was sitting in the med line, and I had, like, I don't know, a Gatorade or something I have. I dropped it six times. It would go down, pick back up, go down. <laughs> I remember that one of the techs had to walk me into my room. Yeah, I was out of it. <laughs> yeah. I just have anxiety. Oh, no, just, you know, I got comfortable there because you get to know the people and blah, blah, blah. Now I got to do it all over again. I know you're cranky. But I can tell you have this face. I haven't seen that face in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a normal face. I know. You look so good, though. You have, like, a tan. You have color. You literally, like, don't really look like a crackhead that much anymore. <laughs> Ten days. That's pretty great. Yeah. You really, really try your hardest so your life can get better. Yeah. yeah, what kind of fish is that, bud? Jack, Jack Ravel. Right on. Good catch. Yo, Lawrence. Oh, he ain't in there. So right now I'm at Bryant Park looking for Lawrence. He's supposed to be meeting me here, which is really cool because I thought that, you know, he was just gonna buck out on everything. You know, he got a little bit salty the other day because I called him on some bullshit. Addicts are some sensitive mother So I want to talk to him and see how he really feels about this shit. What's up? Yeah, Yo, what's up? Where'd you sleep last night? I forgot what, it was some storefront. I got kicked out of the square, dude, for like charging my phone. And the cop that came and got me kicked my bag where I was like, had my head, and I was like, yo, they don't care. So what, they said you can't go back to the square? 
Yeah, I guess I'm banned for a year. For a year? That's up. Yeah. So what's up, bro? You still trying to go to treatment or what? Because I got the bed set up, but I need to let them know, you know what I mean, that you're going to come in like Wednesday or Thursday. No, I, I mean, I, I'm not not accepting the help. It's just, you know, I just was like really upset the other night. I get it. Nobody wants to be like, hear shit that they don't want to hear. But like at the end of the day, like if I didn't give a f about like you or like those two girls that I don't even know, I wouldn't have said shit. You know what I mean? Like. All I see is like three people that could potentially die. Mm -hmm. Try to defuse the situation. Like if it made you feel some type of way, I'm sorry, but it needed to be done, bro. I, th I felt like you were just kind of like throwing me under the bus and making me feel like, okay, this is like you're just being a complete scumbag. And like I tried to like. I was. Not, I, I understand. I was. I just wanted Yo, you to Frank. look at like what's going on with you right now, bro. Yeah. It wasn't to be a dick. It's like no, I know. I'm just a realist, bro. I'm not gonna sugarcoat shit. It's no. F hidden secret, like, we're addicts, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? We do grimy ass shit to get high. I mean, I had a friend overdose in Toledo and I took his dope before I called 911. And he died too. I'll wheel it. All right. I made it. Next stop. Well, you already went through the detox process. Uh, to get all the toxins out of your system. What? And this is to, like, heal your brain a little bit. I've never had any bad trauma into me. All my shit's materialistic. Yeah. I don't know, dude, why I do drugs. That's all I know. That's what you're going to figure out. Right. And you're just going to stop living like that. I know. You're going to do good. Thank you. Love you. If she makes it past this week, I think she'll do really well. And if she leaves this week, it's over. I have not heard from Lawrence this morning. It's time to go to treatment. I'm supposed to call at nine. I mean, I get it from being an addict and like living that way, but man, you got an opportunity for like free private treatment. It's like now or never. Yeah, he ain't answering the phone or nothing, so I'm gonna try to call his brother and a couple other things real quick. But I don't know, man. This kid needs to wake the up. He's supposed to be going to treatment right now. He's nowhere to be found. So if you see or hear from him, let me know. Hey, can we name this episode Ghostface Killer? Kid's gone, dude. I'm irritated as I mean, this is the only thing he had to do was show the up on time. The place we're going to, they're doing Lawrence a favor right now. My honest opinion is I don't know how bad Lawrence really wants this. Probably in there partying his ass off like rehab on that Amy Winehouse shit, saying no, no, no. Well, you need to be there at noon. That's why I was trying to have you call me at least by, by like nine, dude. You ready to do this shit? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Just trying to get lit before I went in. Sorry, right. one more day you'll have sober somewhat. Oh. Are you sick right now? I'm starting to feel like shit. That's why I wanted to try and meet up. Keeps you like a prisoner, you know, slave to the drug. Yeah, this is it. Oh. So can I meet dude or what? No, I can't take you to do that, bro. I'm not gonna put myself in that situation. Yeah. You gotta still be there at noon, bro. I can't take you to do it. I ain't that comfortable being around shit yet like that. I just try to avoid it at all costs right now. You think you're gonna ride the whole program out? Yeah, definitely. Bro, if you get stressed out in here, just remember, like, you got a dope-ass shot to get straight.
Nervous? Not really. Scared. Just ready to get in there. Sick of having to run. Let's get this shit right, bro. I love you, man. I'm, I'm proud of you. Too, man. Put me on your release so you can call whenever, OK? Oh, yeah, dude, thank you. I hope Lawrence gets his life back. I hope he can get back to blowing glass and making art, doing the shit that makes him happy. And I just can't wait to see what kind of progress he makes, man. Right now, I am on my way to go visit Kelly. I have a lot of stuff going on. I have Chris, got into halfway this morning. Other Chris is in Foundations with Kelly. He gets out next week. Rachel gets out next week. It's all good. People are getting sober. How exciting. But the only way for me to know how they're really doing is to stop in and say hi. So that's what I'm doing with Kelly. I think it's nice for them to know that they have at least one person cheering them on. <laughs> Kelly hey, Cat. Oh, I'm so excited to see you. It's good to see you. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Okay, all right. Okay. I was like, you make my day every day, I think of you. I'm so glad you're still here. The house is cool. You know, there's new girls coming every day. So. One girl right there and I, and I doesn't mind cooking, but she's leaving like next week. Yeah. And now all the new ones that come in don't cook, so. Back to bagel bites. <laughs> Easy shit. <laughs> yeah, but it's all right. The place is all right. You know, you do groups all day. I was my therapist the first time last week just for like the initial intake, the psychosocial, all that shit. You know the questions. They're repetitive. The every answer is yeah. always that's different because you don't remember. <laughs> so I'm like, if you lined up all many times I've been asked these questions, when did you start smoking marijuana? Da, 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 da. They, all the answers would be different because I don't <laughs> remember. I'm like, I have no idea. I don't know how much I used back when I was 14, however many years ago that was. <laughs> crazy so we were in a group there's probably like 10 of us and uh -huh. he was pretty true he said it. he goes okay well you know we're all in here right now but realistically three of us are gonna end up in jail two of us are gonna OD or blah 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 and one of us will make it it's like you know it sucks so true yeah. you know what I mean this one girl has been in treatment five times since December this has been like really this is only your third time in yeah. treatment three times a charm yeah have you like had any feelings come up about like anything that maybe you didn't process yet you know, I shared about my kids and stuff and trying to get them, you know, if in time I'll be able to get them back, because you know my rights were terminated. It sucks, I think about it, you know, but even if I stayed sober for five years, seven years, whatever, I don't know if um, me as a mom would want to pull my children from stability, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's selfish on my part, I feel. You know what I mean? They're stable, they're being taken care of. I also think about the shit that I put them through too and what they've yeah. witnessed with me and Kerr and the yeah. drugs and her saying, mommy, wake up, and I'm nodding, you know what I mean? Like. That's like no way of life for a kid. Kids don't judge you, you know what I'm saying? They'll mm -hmm. always love you, but. Do you think you can stay sober? Do you think you'll do it? What do you think? I don't know. I'm just taking one day at a time. I'm not gonna Bible thump it, like, or like these AA thumpers now. No. I think it would be smart for you to consider going right into sober living. Like a nice one, like you used to be in, like a little condo style, fun roommate. Yeah. By the time you get out, it'll be great. I mean, I'm happy I'm here. I'm grateful. I feel yeah. better. You know, every day, I feel better. Freedom is on the horizon. Yeah. Real freedom this time, too. Uh oh. Just really disrespectful to this place, man. They took him in off the streets, like literally with nothing. And uh, kid spray paints dicks all over the place. Like, dude, I thought you were a grown ass man, bro. So I'm gonna try to call him from a different number. I'm pretty sure that, you know, he won't answer my calls. Hello? Hey, who's this? What's up, Lawrence? It's Frankie. Oh. What's going on with you, bro? I like basically took the hit for all these so you didn't draw all the dicks and stuff like that? No, 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 no. I'm not going to take ownership of this easy-ass artwork. And he went back earlier this morning, and they were like, get the out of here. No, 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 no. I was like, rough crowd. Yeah. Regardless, it's hard, bro. All right, bro. I love you, man. All right, let's just It's basically, uh, from the way he makes it sound like the whole house did the graffiti, he did a piece. The way Boca Recovery Center makes it sound is he did know about the graffiti. I didn't really want to argue with him. I just think it's crazy. At the end of the day, it is what it is. We did what we could do for him. He did some dumb shit. We tried to help him. Uh, he didn't get the help he needed, and that's what it is.
It's his life, not mine. I just, I, I'm, I, I, what happened? <laughs> Kelly, they found her dead on the sidewalk. Hello? Hey, Allie. I just, I, I'm, I, I, what happened? Kelly, they found her dead on the sidewalk outside of her sister's house. They found her outside? I don't really know how that happened. Oh, God. <laughs> the mom kept calling me to get her to a sober living, and I tried like 500 pieces. I was trying to get her to a halfway house. It's so expensive. They all wanted to. $150 a week and $500 a month. It should be $1,000. You know, if it would have been easier, I would have been gone. They had to make it so hard. Yeah. It's stupid. It's like you go in, and then after that, they spit you out, and if you don't have the money, then you're, you're what do you do? What do I do? <laughs> I mean, you did everything above and beyond to help her. I mean, you loved her so much. I mean, it's like, I always love just hearing you talk about it because you never gave up on her. Yeah. She's a person. I think that no one loved her or liked her. She had no friends. That's not true. That's not true. Sorry for saying you had a nicer car than me and that you didn't deserve it because you did drugs. Thanks for waking me up every single day in treatment. Make sure I didn't get in any trouble. Thanks for letting me sleep in your bed when I didn't have my own. I feel like she will come home any day or I'll hear from her soon. It needs to be a little bit longer for me to really realize that she's gone. I know how long you had been doing things with her. And the last that I knew, you know, she was you were trying to find her somewhere to go. Yeah. She, she went to treatment. She got like 45 days. I know. She fought hard. She really did. Yeah. How's her family? Her mom's really upset. Who's going to show up? Her sister, probably. Sean, another lady, and possibly a guy. I've been to so many, like, overdose funerals, and there's not a lot of people there. They're like, yeah. You know, and the people at our sad are the ones that tried the most to help them. That's sad that nobody came. I know, and now he's holding it in, I can tell. There's people here. We had so much fun. Like all these pictures, like we go dancing, and she was always so dressed up, and she looked so good. She looked so good when she got yeah. out. Yeah. We have her Tweety Bird. She always grabbed it and brought it just like everywhere. No, How do you go through crack guys. houses and all this shit and you've never Still lost that your stuffed Tweety animal? Bird. Like that yeah. is really like a talent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tweety is ratchet. I love to hear their stories of Kelly. She deserves to be remembered as a good friend and 
you know, all the great things that she was instead of like a heroin addict. And that's all. You know, she was a lot more than that. The first day I met Kelly, we got the DAF the same day. She was really friendly and she made me feel really comfortable, but they didn't have any beds left. So they took like these old dusty bunk beds and they threw them in a storage room. And I'll never forget the first time I laughed sober was cause Kelly smacked her head so hard on our bunk bed. And I just, I was laughing. It was the first time I had laughed. I just always wanted to see her better because yeah. I never got to see that part of her. Yeah. yeah. But this is why I'm so grateful that y'all are here doing this for her because yeah. so many people I've known, their families have given up because right. they didn't think she had anybody. Yes, she did. Yeah. I only met Kelly like maybe five minutes once and five minutes another time, like through the last two years. But through what I've seen and through what I've heard from Allie, and Allie, the way Allie hasn't given up on her, and just so persistent, like, says a lot about Callie in general, too. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, she was a person. She wasn't just an mm -hmm. addict, you know? So what's up, Kelly? How's life lately? Shitty. Shitty, but I'm ready to go. I just think that things are just getting worse and worse, so it's definitely time to go. Like, it's just, nothing's getting better. So, hopefully I'll find new people and friends and a different life. It's scary, but I don't know. It's gotta be better than this shit. <laughs> If you're trying to recover, you're a warrior. You're involved in a holy war, in a battle for the soul, in the battling your own brain. It's become the greatest plague in our society. It's become a global pandemic, a full-blown epidemic in the United States, largest killer of human beings. In this last 16 months to two years, we've lost over 20,000 adolescents from age 10 to 15 in North America, just from opioids. This is astonishing. We're losing thousands of people every couple of weeks.